Hello, welcome back to Booking Gaming. Hi. Otaku Tuesday. Otaku. Playing Tuesday. Fruit of Grisaya. Yes. The Omine route. Right. And I am still nervous about what's going to happen next. We're still on our marathon of recording session day. Yep. Lots of fruits going on. And we're heading Ugh. to the uh, the crash site, which yes. is now a memorial. And we're driving Apparently. there. There's a weird man. There's something wrong with one of the tires. <laughs> right. So the bad's gonna happen. I'm freaking out. I'm Travis. I'm Eric. Let's go. Okay. I guess. Oh God. I'm I'm afraid. I'm pretty sure the idea of leaving any trace of my passing through this world has always repelled me. I didn't want to get married, much less have kids. I didn't want to take on anything that would be left behind after my death. Yeah, me neither. You didn't want to get married and have kids? No. I never <laughs> had any thoughts to do that. But oh. It just kind of happens. Yeah, well. Same reason I've never owned more property than I can carry on my back. But I'm starting to think that, for Amine's sake, I'd be willing to throw that lightness away. If so, I run smack into a logistical problem. Of course I'm referring to my job. Abane, the truth is I'm currently at something of a loss. After another 1.5 years at my job, my field terms up. Should I renew my contract, spend a year as an instructor while s sitting exams, and aim for promotion? Or should I resign, become a permanent reserve, and look for other work? Which would you prefer? This is going to be the choice, and we'll have no idea which is good and yeah. which is bad. Uh, that's quite the question out of nowhere. How are they different? The biggest difference would be in the level of danger. If I renew my contract and get promoted, my risk will go way down. But that also means my total salary will drop sharply. Whereas if I become a reserve member, I'll be able to take on a day job, so my earnings depend on my abilities. But when called back for emergency service, my jobs won't be any less dangerous than they are now. In that case, I vote for the safer alternative. Whichever one that was, I don't understand you when you talk much. <laughs> right? Too many words. But you know, even if I renew the contract, it's going to be difficult for me to move up the ranks since I didn't attend a specialized school. It'd probably take me ten years to make assistant section chief. And getting any further would be harder still, maybe even impossible. My base salary today is 187,300 yen a month. Promoted? Is that a lot? <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. Well, it, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. 2 grand? It's Two and a half grand. You like it's my uh, divide by 100 pretty much kind it of rough very roughly. Yeah, I was going to say it can't be that easy. 233,600 even if I work until retirement age, maybe 449,100. It's not impossible to get by on when you add the benefits and bonuses, but... Huh? Your future salary's already decided? Right. Our company's got a pay scale, so the salary corresponding to every rank is clearly defined. This is not important to what we're doing, but you'd be able to stop the dangerous work, right? For the moment, at least, but that's also dependent on circumstances. If an emergency develops and some big shot says protect me even if it costs your life, I wouldn't be able to disobey. You can't just say no? Well, you can try, but when your superiors say volunteers step forward, hanging back isn't really an option. I mean, sure, they said volunteers. Yeah. I'm not a volunteer. <laughs> when what are you, they going to do, kill me? <laughs> when you get right down to it, that's what they're paying us for. Oh, I see. But then again, if I die on the job as a formal employee, there'd apparently be a hundred million yen payment to my family. Okay, do that then. But you're still dead. <laughs> if I become a permanent reserve instead, I'll still be called up for emergencies, but operating under the table, I can work a little more flexibly. In other words, I'd be able to play dirty behind the scenes without anyone complaining. I might be able to pull through serious crises crises through skill and uh, craftiness. Not an option for a normal employee. So which is safer when you get down to it? I don't really care. Just tell me which one's safer. Right. <laughs> as long as there aren't any dramatic upheavals in the world, renewing the contract and becoming a regular employee carries less risk. But in the case of a large-scale emergency, being a reserve would be comparatively safer. Kind of a subtle difference. What do you want to do, Yuji? All things considered, I'd want to become a permanent reserve and look for another job. 
If we get married and start a family, I want to be able to tell my kid what daddy's job is. Whoa, you're thinking that far ahead? My ovaries are glowing. I mean, that's what we're talking about, right. is it not? Don't sound so surprised. Just whose fault do you think that is? A little while ago, I wasn't thinking more than a day or two ahead at most. Huh. <laughs> that's a good thing, right? Probably, yeah. I don't mind going <laughs> along with whatever you decide, Yuji. I'm the dog here. If you do renew your contract and take the lower salary, I can always get a job myself. But if you want to look for something else, that's fine too. Even on permanent reserve, they're going to keep me on a short leash for five years. I'd need to apply in advance to move into a new home or travel abroad, and I won't be free to pick any job I want either. But you still want to try and find something else, right? Don't worry. If you can't get a job, we can just become a long-haul truck driver team or something. Is this really the choice we're going to have to make? I don't know. Would you seriously be okay with that? It's all good, right? I love driving anything with tires, personally. Might be a better fit for us <laughs> than you might think. I like driving even more on all tires when they're aired up properly. <laughs> Please let me pull over. <laughs> well, to come to think of it, I do have a lead on a job, I guess. Not that anything's been settled yet, but the principal floated the idea of taking me on at Mihama. What? So wait, you're going to become a teacher? Nothing's decided yet. Huh? But what subject would you teach? Oh, that's right. We don't have a PE teacher, do we? So you're going to teach gym class then? Those who can't do teach, and those who can't <laughs> teach, teach PE. Am I right? <laughs> like I keep trying to tell you, nothing's decided yet. Ugh, but that sounds really good to me, you know. Not to put the cart before the horse, but Daddy's a teacher would be super easy to understand, don't you think? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> anyway, marriage, huh? I was planning to introduce myself to your family pretty soon, but marriage would be a ways off yet. Have to get a job first, at the very least. Yeah, yeah, right. But still, I'm kind of happy, you know? Sort of feels like I've got some optimism about the future all of a sudden. Oh, don't say that. Well, stop it. It's like the worst time. <laughs> You're going to die now. That's a good thing. Optimism, if you put it nicely. Wishful thinking, if you don't. I think it was Kazuki who told me they're both manifestations of a psychological self-defense mechanism that keeps us from committing suicide. But whichever this is, I'll take it. I don't think daydreams and theoretical scenarios are going to save Amine, but it's not a bad place to start. Oop. Oh, God. Oh, we're in the forest. Oh, jeez. Oh, God, we are here again. Ooh. Cabbage patch. Nope, not... No cabbage patch. Not anymore. We arrived at the parking lot beside the mountain a little after 10, slightly behind schedule. Since we had to stop and air up the damn tires. Ugh. Since we didn't know where the trail up the mountain began, we stopped into a diner and asked around. But apparently the crash site has become somewhat popular among local kids as a haunted spot. Ooh. So the answer we received was, what, you two? And a judgmental glare. After we explained that I'm a bereaved family member, they finally pointed us towards the unmarked entrance. The utterly deserted path up the mountain had a gentler incline than I'd expected. What, you couldn't climb this? God, you bunch of lame asses. <laughs> The locals rarely set foot in here, and the trickle of visitors has slowed over the years, so the trail's neglected and overgrown. By now, it's been halfway reclaimed by the primeval forest. <laughs> Not too far beyond this tangled jungle, we'd glimpsed a private golf club with neatly manicured grounds, but on this hike, our scenery consists of bristly, waist-high grasses swaying in the breeze, trees sticking out of the harsh soil at odd angles, and the slanting rocky path ahead. That surprisingly gentle incline didn't last long either. Ten minutes into the forest, the slope quickly grew intense. Thanks to the vigorous exercise and high humidity, my backs quickly soaked in unpleasant sweat. Gross. Noticing that Amine's begun to lag behind, I come to a halt and turn around to face her. Get your ass in gear. <laughs> you alright, Amine? I'm, I'm fine. It's a lot easier to walk than it was back then. <laughs> I have a few more back, back problems nowadays, though. <laughs> yeah. The path's fairly wide, probably cut through the forest with the installation of the memorial stone in mind. But even so, now and again we run into steep stretches of rock that we're forced to scramble up on hands and knees. Since we're not pushing through thick grasses as we go, it must be significantly better than it was for Amine back then, but it's decidedly not an easy stroll. 
if this road had been around back then. No use saying that now, of course. Deciding to interpret Amine's words as a monologue, I turn without comment and once again push forward on the rough mountain path. The further we advance, the twistier the road grows, the more frequent and severe its ups and downs. Just as an experiment, I take out my M2 compass and open the lid. At a glance, the magnetic needle seems to be pointing north. Maybe dry compasses are harder to influence? Why does this matter? But having finished sighting, I lower the compass to chest level and the needle immediately begins to shake. The north was inside me all along. <laughs> it's the Jack Sparrow compass. Yeah. <laughs> and when I place the compass on the ground itself as a test, the needle swings dramatically and fixes itself in a completely impossible direction. Up? What? <laughs> I take out my phone and flip on the GPS as if to say, well, how about this? But while the latitude and longitude display accurately, the mapping gets me nothing but a no-signal message. I see. This is rough. No technology. I didn't believe you before, but <laughs> now that I, the smart right. boy. <laughs> I'm standing on a well-defined trail right now, so I, didn't, I don't feel any anxiety, but a quick visual survey of the surrounding area reveals nothing else that could serve as a landmark. Without this path, glancing over your shoulder for a moment would probably be enough to completely throw off your orientation. Or a powerful blizzard may create a temporary whiteout. A jungle this dense produces a permanent greenout. We've spent maybe three hours now hiking up the mountain. I mean, she didn't she walk for like five days? Yeah. Well, <laughs> she went a different, like this is a, path, like I a guess. shorter path they cut. It's been 30 minutes since our third short breather. I'm just about to suggest taking a second longer break when I notice that Amine's grown extremely quiet. The look in her eyes suggests that we've reached familiar scenery. It's probably over here. Letting Amine take point, I follow a little ways behind. Before long, we arrive in a gaping, rocky ravine surrounded on all sides by overhanging trees. Oh, the hey, bus is still there? They found it. They didn't clean up the wreckage? No, they're just like, That's really unprofessional. This area... Hasn't changed much since then. The rusted, ruined bus is still lying where it fell six years ago. Most likely, it was simply impossible to remove it from this place. They paved, uh, they cut out an entire road into the side of the thing. They can't crane a bus out. Right. Or cut it up. Right. And, yeah. I see. If we went in that direction, we could have made it to the road in just three hours or so, huh? If you had a trail leading right to it. Even when aiming directly for a clear landmark, it's often impossible to keep yourself traveling in a straight line through a dense forest. You take so many detours to avoid obstacles that your direction will eventually be thrown off. In my company, new employees receive compass-based navigation instruction as part of their final training. After mastering basic compass operation, the final part of this little course involves throwing the newbies into a dense jungle with only a rough handwritten map and absurdly demanding they find their way to a specific point. Given a halfway adequate path, it wouldn't even be a challenging hike. But in a primeval forest without even animal trials, it's no joke. In the end, the majority lose their way and give up. And these are adults who just spent a number of days learning how to orient themselves under difficult conditions. In some cases, they'll spend a good four hours or so hiking through the woods with a crude map in one hand, only to find themselves back where they started. The instructor sneering, what's wrong, forget something. If anything, you did a hell of a job finding your way out of this place at all. Well, I think it had as much to do with luck as anything else, really. I was never really confident about the direction I was heading. But still, I believe that I'd survive as long as I did just what Kazuki told me, so... As she spoke, Amine's downcast eyes fixed on the dignified striking granite Sento... Uh, what? Cenotaph? Standing before us. A big, like... Cenotaph? It's like a... Memorial? A memorial thing, yeah. It's yeah. Like the Vietnam Wall. Right. It seems to have been a while since the last visitor. The flowers placed before the monument are thoroughly withered, and the offerings of drinks and cakes have clearly been battered by the elements. After cleaning them away, Amane silently places the bouquet and snacks she bought in Mishima Cape on the table set up for offerings. Then sets up lights... And lights her incense sticks. Everyone, I really took my time coming to see you. Thank you. 
<laughs> Crouching down in front of the stone, Amine shuts her eyes and brings her hands together. To be honest, I'm still scared. Oh, is that? To be yeah. honest, I'm still scared of you guys. But I can't just run away forever, so I'm going to stop now. I don't know what happened to you all after I ran away, but I'm sure it couldn't have been a pleasant death. You all died, but I crawled away and survived. I won't ask you to forgive me for that. Just thinking about it is shameless of me. I know that much. And that's why I won't apologize anymore. Instead, from now on, I'll offer you my thanks. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And I'm sorry. Damn it. <laughs> Amine's praying with an earnest, intent look on her face, but I can't think of anything to say to the monument. It's just a stone, in the end. I know Kazuki's not in there, but it's not like I'm stubbornly clinging to that cold realism. I simply can't find the words to speak to my sister. I've never been able to handle this sort of thing very well. Years ago, when my American classmate, Daniel Vaughn, died an American name. on the job, and I rushed over to his funeral, it was the same. Staring at Danny's coffin wrapped up in the stars and stripes, I found myself at a loss. Hey, Danny, you're kidding, right? <laughs> the first Marine's Iron Man couldn't possibly have died, right? You're just going to pop out, out of that thing and yell, Hey, shoddy, he's something wrong, just like those <laughs> Americans do, with that shit-eating grin on your face, right? Stop with the crappy jokes, Danny. Those were the only words that popped into my head. No words can reach the dead. If you want to talk about something, talk about the reason they're gone. No matter how we feel about the matter, people die all too easily when the circumstances demand it. Seeking the reason for the death of Kazuki and the others, I once asked Jables for copies of the investigation reports, years ago now. Unexpectedly, the documents indicated most had died of acute digestive diseases, specifically orally transmitted infections, mainly col uh, colitis. colitis and hepatitis. Uh, the investigators conjectured the group had died in rapid su succession, perhaps two to four days after symptoms first emerged. The source of the infections was almost certainly the bush meat they'd added to their diet. Was the origin of their illness the dog they'd eaten after its death from sickness? Or perhaps... I wonder who it was that cut everyone to pieces like that. Hmm? Right. Yes, the corpses discovered in this place had all been severely mutilated, with the lone exception of Yoshihiko Ochi, the club's advisor. That disturbing scene dominated coverage of the accident, overwhelming the truth through sheer spectacle. The phrase dismemberment murders took on a life of its own, ultimately leading to public suspicion that the sole survivor might have been the criminal responsible for leaving those gruesome corpses behind. Did they not, like, clear her name through the police? Right. <laughs> well, yeah, they did, but people, like yeah. she said, they, people just clung to whatever crazy fantasy they had about it. But take a halfway serious look at the results of the investigation, and you'd see the autopsy suggest that the bodies had been cut apart only after death. And since Amine had escaped from the valley before the estimated times of death for most of the corpses, it was simple enough to surmise she couldn't be responsible for their mutilation. There were plenty of whispers and internet rumors suggesting that Amine must have decided the investigators about the timing of her escape just go on askjeeves.com <laughs> yeah. find out for yourself what's that one with the dog ask no oh, there, they changed it to just it? ask there was one that had like a spotted dog that it was like a search engine around the same yeah, time as I, <laughs> ask jeeves i can't remember but in any event there this was received by the authorities as the speculation it was and the potential case against her was never pursued for an insufficient evidence the next target of the buzzards in Uendo and slander was Yoshihiko Ochi, recorded in the report as the only corpse among the 13 discovered intact. After all, a mass murder of female students by their own teacher was an even more attractive storyline for the classless scum of the world. Since it had a stronger tinge of scandal than the alternative, the media leapt onto this new theory with all the enthusiasm of a dog thrown red meat, adding in insinuations of sexual assault towards his pupils just for spice. I mean... That's pretty accurate. Yeah. With their slander, they tore apart Ochi's starved, pitiful corpse far more cruelly than any knife could have. In consideration of the extreme extenuating 
circumstances, no posthumous charges were ever filed against Ochi, but much like the lone surviving girl, society presumed him guilty. Who cut them up isn't the problem. To keep history from repeating itself, the only thing that matters is understanding why. But I guess that's not going to entertain anyone, is it? I don't know. These episodes have been very entertaining. Right? <laughs> this is what you all wanted. You <laughs> wanted us to play this. <laughs> the hell's wrong with this country anyway? Maybe I don't have the right to complain as someone who was born and raised in Japan and never tried to change a thing about it. But I've also seen this country from an outside perspective, and it routinely makes me sigh in disgust. Wherever you go, people are fundamentally no better than they are anywhere else. I know that rationally, and I've experienced this many times, but it always brings on a nauseating surge of bitterness. I'm fully prepared to die the unappreciated death of a stray dog. Still, every time I feel this familiar wave of disappointment, I can't help but wonder what I've been crawling th through the mud for. It makes me want to vomit. Amine, are you done yet? <laughs> Starting to feel a little sick to my stomach. Didn't they, like, come here to... They weren't to go, like, find a right. hidden treasure? <laughs> yep, thanks. I appreciate you coming along. Are you all right? Yeah, but I don't want to hang around this place longer than necessary. Let's dig up whatever Kazuki buried and get out of here. Sure, but I wonder what she left in there. To be honest, I'm a little scared to look. It's her head! <laughs> How did she do this? <laughs> Her, my say. Reasonable enough, there's no telling what's going to come out of that hole. Even Kazuki's last will and testament might not be so bad on the scale of possibilities. Considering the circumstances back then, if by any chance we were able to dig up her decapitated head... That wouldn't make any sense. Even understanding that the idea is absurd, I learned a long time ago not to put anything past Kazuki, even the physically impossible. Kazuki, huh? For a long time, I'd almost never spoken my sister's name, but lately, it's been different. I mean, we've talked about it and read about it quite a bit. All right. On the Black Cenotaph, presumably built by the families of the victims, that name is listed with all the others. The names of the 13 who died in this place. Canada... Oh, it's going to make us read them all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Canada Saya, Kamori Megumi, Hir Hiruka Tamaki, Sakurai Mifuyu, uh, Shikanai Sukasa, Ozawa Yuko, Okabi Tomo, Sakuma Minori, and Ibuki Haruna. Oh god, there's more. Because Cause... the last one's going to be like, oh, right, Sakushita. <laughs> yeah. But he, he just read that right. like, a there'd couple be, days ago. There'd be no way he would be like, oh, that name. Yeah. Like you just read it and then came out here, basically. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Kazumi Kazuki, Ochi Yoshihiko, Koide Ritsu, Sakashita Chiaki. As I run my eyes across the list engraved oh into the God. smooth stone, something catches my attention. Sakashita Chiaki. That name. Hold on. I mean, yeah. Is that oh, not... my God. How is that not the most obvious thing? Whoops, that's right. My apologies. My name is Sakashita. I'm a big fan of Amine Sans. I mean, she was a very relevant, uh, a big prevalent story, yeah. person in the story. The, even the very end of the story, her name was coming yeah. up. Could it be a coincidence? No, that's... Yuji? What's wrong? Are you feeling sick? Quiet. <laughs> what is this? There's something unpleasant in the air. It's too quiet, not even a bird singing. Oh, shit. As the trees rustle in the wind, I finally pick up the scent of a familiar menacing presence. My breath catches in my throat. In an open rocky clearing with little in the way of shelter, I've caught the murderous scent of an enemy. Amine, get down! Huh? Yeah! Reacting instantly, I leap to push Amine aside, shielding her with my body, but before we hit the ground, there's a violent thrust against my right shoulder from behind. Gah! <laughs> in the next split second, the shattering sound of a gunshot rings off the cliffs and soaks into the trees above, rattling my eardrums. The next thing I hear is a dull thump. By the time I realize it was the sound of my head striking a rock on the ground, my consciousness is already sinking into profound darkness. Okay, Jesus. Oh, no, we're fine. Yuji! Haha, <laughs> 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 what a surprise. To think he'd notice. The man has the intuition of a wild animal. Who are... What do you think you're... 
Yes, yes. Hello there, Suo Amane-san. I believe this would be our first meeting. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Sakashita Kiji. Yeah. Chiaki's father. <laughs> We got that right off the bat. Yeah. Come on, Yuji. God, catch up, dude. Jesus. You're supposed to be oh, like the smart whoops. guy. Sorry, I skipped whatever he said. Oh, no. It Captain Sakashitas. Or did I? I don't know. Yes, that's right. I'm the father of the girl you left to die. No, the girl you killed. Ugh, poor, poor Shiaki. Why did it have to come to this? If that was fate, it was far, far too cruel. It's enough to make you curse God. But you know, how can I put this exactly? God or what have you. When you get down to it, that's basically an abstract concept born from human weakness, right? Why is there a talk what like are, this? What are you talking about? <laughs> Hardly satisfying cursing something that doesn't really exist. And so, well, the way I see it, a man needs something a little more concrete and real. A target you can touch with your own hands. You know what I mean. I mean, he just shot you with a shotgun. You're dead, right? I mean, it, he's, it said he clipped his, hit his shoulder. Oh, well, okay. Yuji. Uh, Jesus. Don't move, you little idiot. I'm in the middle of my damn story, all right? Pay attention, okay? Kids these days never think about anything but themselves. Hopeless trash. The whole lot of them. Am I right? Well... You have to let me monologue, or right? else... Oh, for crying out loud. Unbelievable, every last one of them. God damn it, now I need to reload. Don't move, you got that? Ugh, shit. Did he hit you again? Yuji. <laughs> yeah, I'm alright. <laughs> <laughs> Are you though? <laughs> Although I reflexively offered reassurance, fact of the matter is, nothing about the situation is remotely alright. All well and good that I sensed that sharp murderous aura in time to pull Amine down, but I didn't manage to completely escape the wildly scattered buckshot pellets. It felt as though an enormous stone had smashed into my right shoulder. The blood flowing from my wound quickly grows cold against my back, gluing my shirt to my body. But considering the amount of blood, the flow doesn't seem that intense. I've probably got a number of small pellets lodged in my shoulder. The wound's not going to prove fatal in the short term, but when I try to pull myself up off the ground, my back screams with pain. I try to find a less painful way to move, twisting my body like a caterpillar. But it's wasted effort. That first huge stab of pain has all but paralyzed my body. Keeping still is about the only way I'm able to maintain my composure. Alright, let's discuss my daughter. Having finished reloading shells into his break-action vertical double-barreled shotgun, <laughs> he'll shoot his eye out. <laughs> Sakashita mumbles these words to himself in an oddly calm tone of voice, staring up into space. Fucking cheesy, Rue betrayed us. <laughs> Observing his suddenly placid behavior, my throbbing heartbeat slowly begins to settle down. At the very least, it seems he doesn't, doesn't intend to kill us immediately. Sending Amine a small signal to wait for now with a flick of my eyes, I quietly settle back to watch and wait. Button your pants, woman. Jockey was <laughs> my only child, born to me at 30, a daughter I produced at great pains with my wife I didn't love. A woman I'd married at my parents' rec parents' recommendation at 26. Well, then that's not our problem, is it? To, to be perfectly <laughs> honest, I didn't even want a child, but you see, my middle-aged parents were quite feverent on the matter, and my family circumstances meant I couldn't flatly refuse. My father made himself a very wealthy man playing the real estate game in the chaos of the post-war years, and I absolutely didn't want to inherit the business he'd built through taking advantage of others' misfortune. I frequently rebelled against him, and often got a good beating for my insolence. Whoops, getting a bit off track, aren't we? You got me monologuing, <laughs> yeah. you sly dog. <laughs> We're talking about my daughter, after all. <laughs> well, anyway, in order to get the vile old man off my back, I accepted the wife he offered me at the age of 26. She was the daughter of a regional bank's president. Sounds like a deal. A stuck-up piece of trash <laughs> who cared about appearances and nothing else, always looking at me as though I was her manservant instead of her husband. But somehow or other, I managed to succeed in getting her with child. Somehow or another. I don't know how it happened. I don't know. I skipped health class. <laughs> and so Chiaki was born. I was the one who named her. Not that there was any profound meaning there. She was born in October, so I lazily threw together the characters for Thousand Autumns. Rather trite, really. But, what do you know? Life works in mysterious ways. When my daughter was actually born, she was so unbelievably adorable that my heart just melted. Lovely. The hell's that got to do with us? Oh wait, that might be you. Yep, that oh. was you. 
Yeah, the words almost emerge from my mouth, but I bite my tongue. Right now, we're powerless. Our eyes fixed on the hunting shotgun in uh, Sakashita's hands. Amine and I can do nothing but listen to his words. Apparently pleased by our submissive attitudes, Sakashita continues his monologue in a relaxed, easy tone of voice. Whatever the circumstances of her birth, Chiaki was very precious to me. I loved her as much as life itself. Amine is going to tackle him to the ground. Oh, God. <laughs> when I heard that my Chiaki had gone missing on her way back from that training camp, can you imagine my shock and horror? Of course, I requested the most thorough possible search, including the helicopters. It didn't work very well. No. We were down there for 15 days. It cost nearly 700,000 <laughs> yen a day, and I paid it all. I paid all of it alone. And yet, two full weeks passed without any sign of her. No one ever suspected the bus might have tumbled off some old road well off the planned route, trapping her in this awful place. That's why you don't go to Costco to buy your search parties. Right? <laughs> of course. It never occurred to me either. At one point, I was half convinced my girl had been kidnapped and shipped off, shipped off to some foreign country. I thought I was going to have to go all taken on them. All my efforts were woefully off target in retrospect. And then, when everyone around me had begun to give up hope, you returned alive all by yourself. Of course, we instantly reorganized the search party and they sped off to the rescue, but we were too late. When they recovered Chiaki's body from the scene, I learned my child had been cut into eight pieces, torn limb from limb, quite literally. <laughs> Spread them throughout the regions. <laughs> you must find them all to complete the mission. <laughs> <laughs> I only got the left leg of Exodius. <laughs> I felt as though a part of my own body had been ripped away. Yes, as you might imagine, I cried. In the hospital where they'd brought the remains, I clung to what was left of Chiaki through the white sheet they'd wrapped her in, and I wept and screamed like a child. Such cruel misfortune. I would have taken her place if I could. For a time, I did my best to content myself with that miserable fantasy. But you see... After losing my daughter, it seems all my luck deserted me. Everything crumbled down around me. My company slid into crisis, and my family fared no better. My wife divorced me. My aging father passed away, followed by my mother within half a year. Perhaps Chiaki came to pick up her grandma and grandpa. You might not have guessed it, but she had a rather spoiled side to her, you know. She loved her grandmother and her grandfather very much indeed. Yeah, this is great and all, but we were talking about... Making, I'm bleeding to death. We making babies and stuff. <laughs> and... For four years after, even as I waited for Chiaki to come for me as well, I tried my very best to live on, but it was no use. Everything I touched fell to ashes. We got treasure to find. Work was a disaster. <laughs> my debts mounted and mounted to no avail. Before I knew it, most of my executives resigned at once. And so I had no choice but to fold the company I had built. I lost my daughter, my parents, my wife, and my employees abandoned me. My company crumbled. The only thing I had left was my debt. Well then, what can I do with myself now? My mind was a pure blank white. I couldn't see any path forward. But just then, a certain source of mine, <laughs> I suppose you could say a former classmate of my daughter's, contacted me. That girl told me she'd seen Suo Amine enjoying herself at a festival oh, near bitch. the train station in Mishima Cape. <laughs> it is. It's the ones that called her a cockroach. Yep. Oh, right. I had offered a reward for information on that young lady's whereabouts. The way she suddenly disappeared as if to flee from us had rather bothered me at the time. It was only a vague memory by then, but... Just on the verge of forgetting, I was suddenly reminded of your name. And in that coincidence, I felt, yes... Something like destiny. Time to go kill her boyfriend. It's not her. Right. <laughs> and so you see, all of a sudden, it all flooded onto that blank mind of mine. What I should do next. What I had left to do in this world. I could see it all so clearly. That's the reason you attacked us? Yes, that is. that it is. I suppose you could call it revenge, or perhaps retribution. Yes, indeed. Retribution? Are you serious? Confirm. Just start making fun of him. Yeah, <laughs> you're stupid. What an idiot! Confirming that my pulse had largely settled down while hearing out Sakashita's idiotic life story, I dig my hands into the gravely ground, and pull myself to my knees. Yuji, it's fine. Get back. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh. Grabbing Amine's wrist with a hand coated in sticky blood, I draw her body behind mine. 
Stop trying to numb the pain of your failure by pushing the blame into a scapegoat. All you're really looking for is an excuse to end your miserable life. If you want to die, do it alone. Don't take people who still have a future down with you. Now this is a surprise. You've got quite a mouth on you. Aren't you afraid of guns? You, Kazumi Yuji-san, just what are you? You seem oddly accustomed to having a muzzle pointed in your direction. It's actually pointed off to the side. <laughs> this attitude doesn't seem to be just a bluster of a clueless he's, youth. He's not facing us when, when he's talking right. to us. <laughs> so calm, one might think you stood in front of a gun many times before. Very odd. Having taken a shot, you do understand this is no toy, yes? I mean, I'm in the military. Oh, okay. Oh, right. <laughs> As if to demonstrate, her thru he thrusts forward the muzzle of his gun, the twin barrels, coated with black paint to prevent bare metal from flashing a warning to unsuspecting prey, glitter dully in the afternoon sun. None of that matters, sack of shit, Asan. Respectfully, <laughs> sir. <laughs> You're full of shit. You like a sack. Oh, like a sack of it. You want to find a new purpose in life? Fine, good for you. I don't give a damn, but retribution? Who the hell do you think you are? You're just taking out our, your misery on others. Who died and made your judge, jury, and executioner? Well, my, my, my daughter. daughter. Yeah, don't try to, like, clear up any of the story or anything. Just, nah, just, egg just him piss on. him off. Right. Does a shotgun and a hard luck story make you into some kind of holy warrior? Because from where I'm standing, you look more like a condescending, arrogant lunatic in a kangaroo <laughs> uh, hoodie. If you had a real reason to deliver retribution, and if you were qualified to play that role, maybe I would accept your judgment. But I'm not going to play along with the temper tantrum of some idiotic child who can only hold himself together by forcing his misery on others. Don't make me fucking laugh. <laughs> that is quite something. You've actually got a bit of a silver tongue, don't you? I like it. Such a desperately <laughs> passionate little speech. Were you trying to anger me? Get me to turn my gun towards you rather than Amine-san? Perhaps you thought to enrage me into unloading both barrels on you, enabling Amine-san to escape as I reload? Ha! That really is something. Such courage! And just roundhouse kicks him in the face. Right. <laughs> You're quite the little hero. So cool. <laughs> hmm. All right. I'll permit you to have a crush on me. Well then, <laughs> if you're that attached to this, to the idea, perhaps I really should kill you here and now. Feel free to try. As a rule of thumb, people who bother to spout off threats like "Do you want to die?" aren't about to follow through on them. When someone wants you dead, they'll kill you, not waste their time giving you a sermon. I don't know. Have you ever like seen any villain in any movie ever? Yeah, right. They always talk too long. What this man really wants is us uh, to see us cowering on the ground, begging for our lives, ideally with snot running down our faces. Mm. She just karate chopped him in the back of the head. Right. Amine? Oh, what's the matter, Amine-san? I'm the one who left your daughter to die. I'm the one you want to kill, right? Yuji has nothing to do with this. No, he lost his sister here. If anything, he's a victim just like you. Give him the gun. Okay. <laughs> I see, I see. Flawless logic in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. And you're asking me to spare Kazumi-san's life, even if it means surrendering your own? Yes, I am. Well, a very noble request, but let's see. Whatever shall we do? If you want an excuse to die, fine. I'll die with you, here and now. Nominee! <laughs> Stop. Stay out of this, Yuji. This is between me and him. Huh. Is he that precious to you? This Kazumi-san Kazumi of yours. Kuh. As Sakashita's face twists into the habitually mocking expression of a man rotten to his core, Amine realizes her mistake. This man had no intention of letting me go from the start. Right, he's going to kill something precious to right. her. He intended all along to kill me before her eyes, to force her to suffer the agony of losing someone precious to her, and only then take her life. No, it's entirely possible that I was the only target from the very beginning. He may want nothing more than to force Amine into the depths of despair, to leave her stranded in her agony, crawling pitifully through a living hell. You see, I've been waiting for a very long time now, for a chance like this. Nobody, nobody understands my pain. Except for, like, all the other parents? Right. So in the end, this is all <laughs> I have left. Right, uh, like, I'm... 
they're not even like trying to explain. He's just crazy. Uh, right. That's a crazy boy. You know, you're one hell of a nuisance, old man. I imagine so. That is the point of this little exercise, after all. Please savor my arbitrary cruelty at greater length. That's the one and only thing that can bring me comfort now, you see. Disgusting. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> yes, despise me. Curse me from the bottom of your hearts, all that. And most of all, suffer. Suffer terribly. All right, you can run away now. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Later. You can actually go. I we'll do this again next year. Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> Are you deaf? I'm telling you to run. Scamper away. Struggle pathetically. I want to see you cling desperately to your miserable lives. Ready, set, go. <laughs> what the hell are you waiting for? Run! Oh, he just... He just shot twice. Yeah, he's got... Well, he's got time to... Run while he reloads. <laughs> or attack him. Right, that's what I'm saying. Attack him now. As if stung by the sound of Sakashita's blast into the sky, Amane roughly grabs my clothes, pulls me to my feet, and drags me down the rocky path at a dead run. Gah! <laughs> As I'm forcibly dragged into sudden action, my spine creaks painfully and my wounded shoulder pulses with agony. Amane! Hey! Amane! My voice doesn't reach her ears. Half carrying me, she runs in sheer desperation, frantically putting every inch she possibly can between us and that man. That man's no different. Not human anymore. He's a ghoul. Amane's tearful, choked voice trembles with terror. Simply fleeing from the mocking laughter behind us is the most we can do. Yeah, good good idea putting this uh, idea in her head to come back here and do right? all this. <laughs> More times than I can count, we lose our footing on the uneven ground. Half crawling over sharp rocks and thick vegetation, we run desperately, directionlessly, thinking only of gaining distance from our pursuer. Whenever we come to a momentary halt, a blast of gunfire gouges the ground only a little behind us. Frantic to keep our legs moving, we eventually lose all sense of where we're going. But as we splash across the small stream Amine and the others had used as their water source, our menacing shadow abruptly vanishes. <sighs> Did we get away? He doesn't seem to be chasing us. We won! <laughs> no, he's here, hiding himself but watching us closely. You can tell? Only by intuition, but I don't think he'd give up so easily either. At a guess, Sakashita must be a recreational hunter. The first time we met, he'd approached me with a perfect stealth, then vanished like a ghost into the station crowd after our conversation had concluded. Most likely, he'd got extensive experience hunting large wild game like deer or bears. But uh, such animals can notice the presence of a typical human being from a good 200 meters away. Hunting such creatures requires the ability to blend perfectly into your surroundings, a skill equally applicable to stalking other humans. This man's a serious goddamn nuisance. Gah! <laughs> okay, so here's where my head's at. Mm -hmm. We're at an episode. Okay. This could be close to the end. Yeah, probably. It seems like a finale type thing, but I don't know how much is left because obviously we're going to try to go. We're going for like a good ending. So I have to imagine there's some kind of epilogue. Right. So what I'm asking is, do we call this episode and call the next one the finale? I don't know. It might not be the finale. That's true. There could be more. We got a whole. They draw a lot of things out. Yeah. There might even be like, yeah, future stuff. Like, let's go get married now. And That's what I'm saying. There's probably like some kind of <laughs> epilogue or something. So I think we could probably call this episode and the next one. If there, if we're close to the finale, the next one, we'd probably get enough in the next episode. Because the the main worry is always, oh, we're done. Oh, next episode's five minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I don't think that's going to happen with this game. No, probably not. I think we're, we're still in the thick of it. So the next episode is going to at least be a full episode. Yeah. They're going to have to kill this guy. Oh, my God. Well, he's going <laughs> to kill one of you. Maybe the good ending is you sacrificing yourself for her. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Oh, God. After he shot twice, they should have tackled him. Right? Together. Why would you not? <laughs> I feel like Yuji could probably kill someone with his bare hands. Right. Maybe not with bullets in his back. Even, well, you're right. He's hurt, but still. Take a piece off that decrepit bus. If they both had jumped him, they could have taken the gun from him. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't have been that hard. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll find out what happens next time. Okie dokie. Jesus. Jesus.